to welcome all of you here tonight. I think this is an exciting night. Um, I have the fun job of introducing the... Uh... Okay, now we, uh, we, move, we move through the, uh, you know, through the panel and, and we always work, certainly once again using the model of the high-level athlete, very closely with, with industry. And it's, um, it's, it's very important to, to work back and forth. Uh, Dr. Taunton has mentioned has been working with Nike for a long time and it's, and it's a very positive relationship back and forth. So we're really lucky to have uh, uh, John Tapin from um, Brooks Sports to come and uh, speak with us. He knows a little bit about running himself. He ran track for Indiana University. Um, and um, so he's going to come and talk to us from the industry uh, perspective on the topic of minimalist versus traditional shoes. John. Uh, thanks, Jim, and everybody else for uh, inviting me to be here and giving me the opportunity to talk to all of you. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk to you about Brooks' point of view on uh, running shoes, traditional versus minimal, what's right, what's wrong, or um, how we go about doing that, and uh, what, our, what our thought process is. Um, so first of all, we kind of started thinking about this, you know, two or three years ago, was out there in the market, there was just a lot of confusion. We're sitting there, um, you know, people are talking about barefoot running, minimal running, less is more, traditional running shoes, what's right, what's, right, what's wrong. Um, obviously, the conversation we're having here tonight, that's why we're all here. And so what we did is, what we always do is, um, we always look at things from a science or a biomechanical standpoint. Uh, but we don't just live in a bubble or in a lab. And so what we do is we actually go out and talk to people. We, we talk to runners, because that's what we do at Brooks, is we make running shoes for runners. And we actually went out, we went into people's homes, we went and immersed ourselves in their lives. And we know we asked them, how do you run? Like, describe your perfect run, what do you like to do? Um, you know, describe the running shoes you wear, and uh, uh, you know, what is your perfect run to you? And people would say all these different things, and why they run, and different inspirations, and different thoughts and processes behind that. And uh, we started getting these common themes from everybody. And what came out of that was this concept of float and feel. Uh, you know, when you ask people how you connect to your run, you know, there's this particular experience that some people have. And some people talk about feel, you know, that I want to feel the ground underneath my feet. I want to connect with the ground. Um, I really want my feet to be empowered. I want my body to be empowered. I want to really activate my muscles when I'm running. And on the other side, you have these people that are talking about float, you know, hey, I really don't want to feel the ground underneath my feet. I want to be, you know, higher off the ground. I just want the shoe to be in control. I just want to go out, go out, put my shoes on, just put my mind on autopilot, go for a run and come back and be done. I don't want to think about my shoes. I don't want to think about my feet. Um, and so you kind of get these two different um, kind of experiences out there that people want. Some people want to float. Some people want to feel. Uh, and they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, some people would actually describe both. Some people would say, hey, you know, some days I want to feel lighter. I want to wear a light shoe. I want to go out and run faster. And then uh, maybe the next day I'm a little bit tired. My, I'm a little bit beat up. I want to put a shoe on that maybe controls my foot a little bit more and, uh, you know, gives me a little bit more of a break. And so as we started thinking about that, uh, we're like, well, how does this fit into our current shoe makeup? And as a brand, we've always um, really started with biomechanics. We've always been inspired by the foot, kinematics, how the body moves and works. And, you know, from neutral to control or basically building shoes based on foot type. If you have a high rigid arch, we make one type of shoe for you. If you have a, you know, a flat footed over pronating foot, we make a different type of shoe for you. And then there's this continuum of different shoes we make on this biomechanical spectrum. And so what we did is we took this biomechanical, this horizontal line and added the experience spectrum to it. And we basically came up with, um, you know, float and feel and then we were able to segment our line into two different segments. So on the top, top side, this more float side was our core line, our traditional line of shoes that we've been making for years that people like uh, and people have come to know and trust. But with this whole minimal and barefoot trend, we're like, hey, we want to build shoes for these people that are into this, but uh, we want to figure out how to do that. And so we create a whole line of shoes that we called pure project shoes. And as we one about that, we actually have um, basically two different approaches of how we go about building these two different lines of shoes. So with the core shoes, we have a philosophy called Shoes For You. And initially what we started with that was this whole idea of uh, looking at gender. You know, men and women, uh, how are they different? How do we build shoes for men versus women? And as we started looking at the groups, what we found is that the differences between individuals are greater than the differences between the groups themselves. 
So for instance, me and one of the ladies in here might have more in common with our feet than me and any of these guys on this panel. And so our concept became, you know, let's build shoes for the individual. You know, how do we build a shoe, um, you know, from a landing, from a crash pad standpoint, from a forefoot flexibility standpoint. And we do that by silo. So a neutral shoe is built a certain way, a guidance shoe, support shoe, control shoes. Um, we have a toolbox for how we build each of those shoes for each of those foot types. And ultimately, for each gender out there, or each person out there, you're going to have a shoe that's going to be optimal for you. And then with our Pure Project shoes, we wanted to create a, um, you know, a set of shoes that, you know, they're lightweight, they're more minimal, uh, they're lower to the ground, they, they allow you to connect to the ground a little bit more. And we actually came up with this, uh, what we call our ideal technologies, and it's another different way of actually going about creating the shoes. So we don't believe in just taking a core shoe or a traditional shoe and just you know, cutting six millimeters of foam off it and saying, hey, this is a minimal shoe, go out there and run with it. We believe all you do with that is you just take material away. And so uh, one of the things we did is what we call our ideal heel in our shoes, where we actually, the geometry we do in the heel actually encourages your body to land closer to joint center. Um, so by taking material away, it actually changes your biomechanics a little bit, changes your alignment, and actually sets your body up uh, for a better run. And the beauty of this is it actually allows you to go from a traditional shoe to one of these ideal shoes in a more seamless way. Whereas we don't believe um, with our Pure Project shoes that you really need a grace period to train into them. You don't have to get a shoe and like ease into it over three, four, five, six weeks or whatever. We really believe that you can go into one of our ideal shoes and um, you know, it's a brand new shoe so you're not gonna go run 10 miles in the first day out there. But we really believe that you can take it and transition to it pretty much seamlessly uh, immediately. Uh, so at the end of the day, we believe that comfort and runnability win. Um, we believe in runners, we believe in people, and we want you to have the best experience out there. So if the shoe's runnable and it's comfortable, um, you know we have options out there, whether it's a traditional shoe or a pure shoe, that um, either of those options is going to work for you and keep you healthy and, and running, running happy. So thank you. Well, we're keeping right on schedule. Good work. No shoes have been thrown yet, so uh, so this is uh, we're we're doing well. Um, by the way, the order here was picked out of a hat. There was no particular rhyme or reason. So um, you know, the except for the fact that at the end of the day, once we're all done, we hand them over to the physio, and they're the ones that work with them day in day out and finally get them better. So maybe there is uh, poetic justice. And Blaze. Uh, Dubois is um, the physiotherapist here and is going to speak to us and he's a consultant with the Canadian track and field team and so he sees a lot of runners obviously within that and I'm sure has some interesting things to uh, say about this topic. Blaze. Okay. <clears throat> so we are barefoot since millions of years. We wear very thin shoes since thousands of years. We were running in minimalist shoes up to 1960, 70. And since 40 years, I don't know why, we have big bulky shoes to run. And when I look for the evolution of the shoes, it's probably and certainly because some people told us that this type of shoes will prevent injuries. So that's bring a very important scientific question. How does our modern running shoe with its specification for support, stability and cushioning really prevent injury? And has nature gotten it completely wrong? Have we been wholly misconceived? Interesting question. So I will pass very fast through science and shoes. And it will be a pleasure to debate about that if some debater are not uh, agree, but today it's a little special because normally I'm alone in one side, but now there is just another guy to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> new technologies promoted annually by shoe companies are not supported by published scientific evidence. Running shoes change natural biomechanic by doing the promotion of heel striking and by decreasing cadence. Shoes change muscular activation sequences, proprioception, and balance. 
antipronator technologies and cushioning in running shoe do not decrease the incidence of injuries and do not increase the perceived level of comfort. Higher priced shoes do not decrease the incidence of injuries <laughs> and are not more comfortable. Running shoes increase O2 consumption, decrease running efficiency, and decrease performance. Running shoes cushioning increase the mechanical stress on the skeleton. Yes, I say cushioning increase the mechanical stress on the skeleton, or doesn't decrease it, depends the author, except for the foot. So yes, running shoe cushioning decrease the stress, the peak pressure, especially on the foot. And my big question is, why we would like decrease the stress on the foot and not to the other part of the body. Why I don't prescribe to my patient to run with like a lower back belt and a, a knee brace and, you know, there is, if you want to protect your body, there is no limit to protect your body. <laughs> Shoe fragilized foot tissues, weaken foot muscles and flatten foot arches. Transferring to minimalism increases the incidence of injuries if it's done too quickly. No strong science on that, but I believe that. Because if you decrease the stress on your tissue, you will cause some frailty in some, some specific tissues. And that means that if you, one day you increase the stress too fast, you will cause an injury. And I can tell you if you move too fast to a minimalist shoes, what type of injuries you will have. Six of them are always the same. So we need to be very gradual if we move to a minimally shoes. And what I use with my patient are very simple rules. One minute more per training rule at the beginning of the training. And for sure, if you move to a light trainer or some racers or barefoot, sometimes you need more time. But the question, and it's the reason why I was loving his title. Why to move to a minimal issue if I have no problem? And that's a very good question. So if you're adapted to this type of shoes, if you're not injured, and if you don't want to perform, don't change your shoes. <laughs> but I'm guessing probably less than 5% of people here have these three criteria. And I prescribe big bulky shoes sometimes for some specific foot problem and specific uh, thing. Uh, not just that type. But that's less than 1% of my population. So I love shoes. Don't think that I, I don't love shoes, OK? I love shoes to protect against environment. But I want a shoes with a perfect fit. I want to be socially accepted, so running barefoot at Quebec City is a little weird. <laughs> and for this reason, I run with the shoes. But I want shoes that don't change my biomechanic too much, don't change too much my neural sensation, and do the promotion of my tissue adaptation. I don't want to become weak in my foot, so I wear minimal shoes. <laughs> so what I recommend and that's for me very important. If you're, you develop your body, your uh, anatomy, and your biomechanic, like children and teenager, there is no reason for me to wear big bulky shoes. And if you're a beginner and you start to run, why would you like to wear a shoes with a heel, stiffer, heavier, with cushioning? There is no reason. We will speak about that after. And if you are an uh, high-level athlete and you want to perform in racing flat shoes, why you want to train 80% of your training volume with the big bulky shoes that change your biomechanic compared to the biomechanic that you have with your flat shoes? A lot of questions that we will uh, debate in a moment. Thank you. Thank you.